Hello, welcome to the first video lecture. This will be a review of several math concepts that you should already be aware of. First, we will cover the metric system. Second, we will look into scientific notation. Third, we will investigate or review dimensional analysis. And finally, a quick review of trigonometry. Units. The three main units that we will use throughout the year, or the base units that we will use throughout the year, for length, we will use the meter. For mass, we will use the gram. For volume, we will use the liter. Now, within the SI system of units, this is an international system, the kilogram is actually the base unit, but we will still be probably using the base unit of gram. Kilo just means 1,000 grams. And that's just from the metric system in the step up, which we will review in a second. All systems, including the British or English system or American system, however you want to look at, use time measured in seconds for this. Uh, the metric system, as a quick review, is a base 10 system. There are prefixes that denote uh, the value to whatever unit you have. I'll review this a little in a little bit when we get to uh, conversion factors. Now, derived units are created or have been created from lo certain laws of physics. For example, this unit here is a unit for acceleration. It, discuss it describes the rate of change of speed. So speed is a meter per second. And the rate of change of that would be and how fast something is accelerating, which would be a meter per second squared. Here's a list of units that we'll use throughout the year. You see our three base units at the top of the, the list, the meter, kilogram, and second. Those three, as a matter of fact, combine to create the newton. A newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. One of the things that will be pretty important throughout the year is recognizing units and using them to check your answer during problem solving and uh, through other analysis. You want to make sure units always match up. So if for some reason you get a newton equaling to, say, a kilogram meter per second cubed, there's something else missing from whatever you have done before. Now, a lot of these units on here we'll be using when we get to electromagnetism in the second half of the year and those will be discussed in a further point. Units are really important in problem solving. They give a description to whatever the magnitude is. So for the number just five, adding in meters tells us a little bit more than just the magnitude. Now in order to convert between different types of units, we're going to have to use a conversion factor. A conversion factor is just a relationship between two units. When we multiply any unit by a conversion factor, this is the same thing as multiplying by 1. This is because the numerator and the denominator are equal. So 1 inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So if we want to convert something from, say, centimeters to inches, that's going to be our conversion factor. There are several conversion factors that you'll see in a second that you should start to memorize and be very familiar using. Now, with quantities within units, you need to have the same units to add and subtract them. But if you have, if you're doing multiplication or division, that's not important. You can have different units multiplied by each other. And this is how conversion factors work out. As we move into harder physics problems throughout the year, it's going to really be important to pay attention to units. Units are going to be the trick to help you solving problems. We'll use our still stick with our base units, length, mass, and time. But we'll have all sorts of different combinations for these. For example, a joule is a newton meter. So that's the same thing as a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So in order to convert this or solve for something, 
using joules, you're going to want to look at those relationships and the dimensions of the base units. All right, here are some helpful conversion factors. These here will be used probably in throughout the first half of the year. When we get into the second half of the year, we will use um, a lot of the electromagnetism units, which we'll talk more about later on. I would ask for you to please try to memorize the first two and the pound to Newton conversion factor. Um, the second one up there, one mile to a kilometer, you can figure that out if you know the inch to centimeter one. So they're just a little more helpful things. And this will be something that is useful throughout the, the uh, length of this course. In the box on the right, we have our metric prefixes beginning with nano. A nanometer is one billionth of a meter, so it's a very small distance. And as we move up through micro, milli, centi, these are all still smaller than a meter. Then we get larger, and we go into kilo, mega, and giga. Um, you see also the prefixes there, so they will be in front of the base unit which symbol, which would be M. Now the final column there is scientific notation. This means that that number, 10, raised to whatever exponent. Now for a unit that is a, a negative exponent, that means you're moving the decimal place to the left nine times for a nanometer. Whereas for a gigameter positive, you're going to move the decimal point to the right nine times. So let's say we had two centimeters. This would equal, this would look like two times 10 raised or to the exponent of the negative two. And when we would actually cut that out, that would be 0 0.02 meters. Here's a sample conversion that I'd like you to do in your notebook. So please pause the video and, and determine the distance in kilometers from Boston to LA if the distance is 2,985 miles. You need to go back to find the conversion factor. It's on the previous slide. So again, stop, do this out in your notebook, and then continue. All right, hopefully in your notebook you have something similar to this. Please remember to show all your work. So we're going to take our base unit, or our given unit, of 2,985 miles. And we're going to put this over 1. I like doing this just because when we get into other types of units where there are combinations, let's say meters per second for speed or velocity, you will have kind of, it will already be set up correct. Now. Our conversion factor to go from miles to kilometers is one mile is equal to 1.609 kilometers. So this is our conversion factor, which we're going to multiply by our given value. And if we notice here, the first thing that's going to happen is the miles will cancel out. So while I can't write it into the slide here, you can imagine crossing off each mile and you're left with just kilometers. So our correct answer is 4,803 no, kilometers. Now I rounded based on significant figures because there are four significant figures here. I would like you to start thinking actively about significant figures and how you can do and how many there are. Last, there are two more conversions that I'd like you to do in your notebook. Please make sure to show all of your work. That is very important. Show your work. Thank you. Our last math concept for the day is trigonometry. You should be very comfortable using this already and familiar with most of the stuff that I'm going to talk about. Starting with Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is the idea that for any right triangle, either there's a relationship between the sides and that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. c is the hypotenuse, a and b are both 
any two of the other sides. So for example, for this triangle here, showing a vector V with components in the X and Y direction, the relationship would be Vx squared plus Vy squared is equal to V. This would be something for velocity. We will use this a lot when we get into trigonometry, excuse me, when we get into vector analysis. Uh, in addition to that, you have the relationship between the angles and the sides. So using SOHCAHTOA, sine, the opposite of the angle, opposite side over the hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Another way of remember, remembering this is Oscar had a heap of apples. And then as you can see here, they're all shown below here for some angle theta within this triangle. Please make sure you understand how to do the inverse of all these functions, so the inverse sine, in order to determine the angle. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this first video lecture. I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.